Hey everyone, this is Ethan from Riptide. Let the bot battle begin! Welcome to World Championship 7. Today we're just going to be talking about the iteration of Riptide's weapon over the process of two seasons of BattleBot. Get ready to go for a rock. Oh! oh, 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 oh my God. Wow! And, and that's insane. You, you just don't see a, a vertical spinner do that here in the battle box. And that's wild. There he is. So this is kind of starting, you know, year one, Riptide. Uh, we started with these bearings called the sphere coiler bearings. So we had one that would go right here in the middle, like that. The other one would go right here, like that. We were like, wow, you know, these bearings are rated for like, I don't know, I think it was like 15,000 Newtons each. And we we're like, that sounds like a lot of Newtons. Took it, you know, to, into the first fight of Huge. And we were like, yeah, you know, we're going to do so well. And we fight, we win. But we were just like, why did our weapons stop? <laughs> they got stuck. And our bearing, our weapon system was shot. Sid was trying to ramp it up and just couldn't. This is actually one of the bearings that we used. And Greg was like, oh yeah, I uh, forgot to tell you, you have to constrain the inner race. And putting all that effort into constraining our inner race would have almost required a complete redesign. Which kind of led us into our next solution. It was like a day and a half that we had. A Minotaur was like, hey, we experienced this exact same issue as you. Uh, and we switched to these cylindrical roller bearings and how they're different than the spherical roller bearings is they don't have the pivoting part and they only just have the rollers, which is actually kind of what we, we, we didn't, the pivoting part just seemed excess and unnecessary and unhelpful. Um, so we ended up switching to four of these, um, and inside the weapon bar, um, we'd, we'd have one that would go right here and another one that would go right here. And one thing that was really, really, really helpful for us is like we are in the dead of Vegas and there are no machinists around uh, and where our sponsor really stepped in Zometry is they had a network of machinists in Vegas that we were able to take advantage of in a tight pinch and so we went over and we were like hey we need this part made and they really um, work to get this cap made here we we can't do the thicker shaft and we can't fit more but let's just see if this works like it's already a higher load load rating um, than what we had before um, and yeah, it ended up um, working for us better. And there was the one shot in the defender fight where we just like punch ourselves like off. And what ended up happening is because there was a gap, this whole thing, and because the washer was whole, um, so thin, like this whole thing slid uh, in the defender fight. And one of these belts um, actually slid and went straight in that gap. It wasn't the bearings this time. This was a more fixable issue. So after that, we ended up switching to just putting a ton of thrust washers in here and just lubricating the crap out of it. We nailed our process in that fight. The whole weapon bar uh, was made by our sponsor, Zometry. The pulleys, pulleys, like they really came in for us uh, and did an, an exquisite job. And especially as like a first year team, like the issue that we had is we had no network we had nothing, zilch. And Zometry was able to provide us with the network that we needed to be successful in that season. So there's a few issues here. One is this shaft was not thick enough. In fights where we were fighting other vertical spinners, it would bend a lot. Uh, it bent in the Bloodsport fight too. And we kind of just had to bend it back <laughs> every single fight. <laughs> and just like, so that was an issue. And we really had just like a, a weapon reliability issue. The other issue is that um, these towers, which held our weapon system, are only supported by two six millimeter screws. And, and it's slotted, by the way. Those screws would kind of either shear or they would move in the slot. So then these motors would just flop around by the end of the fight. <laughs> you know, these are like rookie mistakes and we had our own set of learning curve. Like some people said like, oh, like Riptide kind of just showed up and like did well. Um, but like, no, we had, we had our learning curve and that was our first year weapon system. And it was kind of uh, Mr. Jank, um, but at the same time it, it did pretty well. So just going through the different metals on the weapon system, the weapon shaft, uh, it's just made out of grade 5 titanium. It's not a short shaft that you could just make steel and just make your life easy. 
Uh, we we needed the the weight that Titanium gave us. The weapon bar is just you know general forty one forty hardened steel. It would be nice to have like something like S seven or um, like in there, but we just kind of wanted to go with soft and reliable. Um, and AR five hundred will kind of cut into our weapon a lot. And the weapon bar that we used against huge, there was like a huge gash. And this is the weapon bar that we used against like uppercut and bloodsport. And you, you can kind of see, it was just kind of degrading over time. So for year two, we definitely wanted to speed up the weapon system. We were like, this is great, and we can do better. <laughs> you know, we're seeing everyone go to 16S, and we thickened up the shaft to kind of prevent bending. The weapon bar itself is actually ribbed uh, over here, which is like a really, 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 really hard thing to machine. Most machinists will look at that and go like, I hate you. <laughs> like, I don't want to machine that. But we also needed the extra bearing support because we just keep hitting people so hard. Shipping away! Oh! Another! Right oh! Off the glass! The steel is the same as what we used last time. And like, we were so happy with what we had on the first year. The zometry, we were like, hey, can you just send us the same batch? And they worked hard to make sure they got the same exact person. Um, same exact quality standards. And you don't know if it's a good steel or a bad steel until you test it. It was really good that they really um, tested things and made sure we got certified 4140 material. It was really well priced at the same time. Then the captain took flight. Wow. Listen, we've seen Shredder Raider take shots over the years. Oh. Rarely does he fly that high. Riptide is on another level right now. We did shorten the weapon bar and I think our thing is like our internals are so fat that we're continually just trying to get a little less wide each year because we like big, consistent electronics. We're kind of just working around that design limitation. Uh, and yeah, we were able to kind of shorten the length of the weapon bar and just kind of beef up different sections compared to this because this guy's really thin. Like if you look at this, like I am surprised nothing broke uh, in year one. Like really, really thin. And um, this guy is just a lot thicker uh, and a lot more durable. Yeah, I think this is the deadliest robot we've seen since Tombstone. They handed Black Dragon their first ever KO this year and knocked out all their opponents with an average of just 59.5 seconds per fight. Your two weapon has really been kicking butt, as you can see. Um, you know, I think just increasing our speed using the 16S batteries compared to the 12S batteries just really um, kind of put things over the edge, just combined with like the forks that we were running, just kind of lifting up our opponent a little better. Like I think people will have like a massive fork or like a massive budget and we just have like these little skinny little things and it was just enough to like lift our opponent just a little bit higher so we get a little bit more bite with like this improved weapon geometry. And of course another display of dominance by the top seed on this side of the bracket Ethan Kurtz and Riptide. Boy dude they look scary. You know we've made a ton of changes. Um, throughout season one and season two. And the one thing that has stayed consistent is the quality of the parts that we are getting from Sometry. So thank you so much Sometry for being our main sponsor for both seasons. And we just love the partnership and love the quality that you've been giving us. And thank you so much for um, helping us kick butt in the tournament.